<laughs> yeah, they can. Yeah, well, go for uh, it. Well, let me ask you this: Do you share that from the platform, or you've got too much stuff, other stuff that is maybe you feel like you shouldn't share it or whatever? You know, I'm a story person. I love. That. I think it. I think it's essential for any skilled professional speaker, keynote speaker, to build their keynote with a opening story that captures the attention of the audience and lets the audience understand that you know what they're going through to build rapport. So you need so an opening that, story. A, yeah, you do yeah, share so you that. need an opening story. And then, the, and the, so when I, when I lay out a keynote, I want an opening story that lets them know we're gonna go on a journey and that I've been where they are, I've been in their shoes and setting an expectation of where we're gonna go. Where are you now and where you're gonna go and how are we gonna bridge that gap? So that's the opening story. Then an origin story, what gives me the right to talk? Well, that's where the painting story comes in, which I didn't give today, but that's where that would go is step number two is, is okay, well, why should I listen to Ford? Like, who is this guy and what gives him the right to be the authority on stage? But then after that, I'm not the hero of those next stories. Yeah. I want, I want somebody who I've helped to be the hero. I want to use somebody or an example of someone who's a typical in the audience. So I want to tell the story, two or three stories of people who've used my advice and what they went through so they get the hero's journey. And then I want to close with an anchor story that lets them know that, look, here's what somebody did who used all these strategies and tactics that we're talking about today so you can do it too and end it. So now I don't know what your philosophy is for doing a keynote, but I found over the years that that's the formula for success and remaining relevant. Unfortunately, we both know in the number of years that, you know, you started when you were six, um, how, Four. yeah. And, and we both know people that were really successful in business. And then when COVID hit, they lost everything because they, they couldn't compete. They couldn't compete with the different mediums. They didn't know how to communicate. They, maybe they were humorists, but you don't get that feedback of the audience, right? You don't get the right. laughter, the eye contact and the other things. So. I think that going forward with devices and the way people are tied to their devices and the way they're consuming content, I was just at a speaker's round table with a good friend of ours, you know, Steve Spangler. And I was talking to Steve, who's got, you know, billions of views on YouTube, go check him out, Steve Spangler I'm Science. Real. And, you know, one of the things he told us is he's done, he's done, you know, literally we're talking hundreds of millions. We're not making a number up, but just go check him out. So he's the guy I listened to about YouTube and he said, that their tests right now from YouTube, even though YouTube's trying to do long form or has always been long form content, TikTok's trying to go to long form content, but the studies show 12 to 18 seconds is the sweet spot. Yeah. How the hell am I supposed to talk about anything of value in, oh, hell, I didn't hit the button. What's going on, Jane? You're missing it. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, a location. You know, Don't worry about yeah, it. We'll just call yeah, it yeah. a location. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm just like, how am I supposed to do that in 12 to 18 seconds? So, I'm not saying you can't have longer form content, yeah. but you only have less than that to catch their attention. If it's, it's like people ask me, what, like how long should an episode of, of I have Fortify Live? I go live Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and something else. I don't remember now. What format Twitter. do you use for that? So, so like you, you're using this format right now called StreamYard, StreamYard. and you're broadcasting it or you're recording it and broadcasting it. Yeah. Well, StreamYard allows you to go live on multiple platforms. So yes. in my show, I pre-record the episodes, we broadcast them live, but I'm there live. So those, if you watch, even though yes. it says I'm there live answering questions in the background yes. and chatting like I'm live. Yes. But the reason I do that is because sometimes the guest microphone doesn't work, the camera doesn't work, the lights oh, don't yeah. work, oh, definitely. or they don't show up on time. And so to just to remove the stress, I pre-record right. yeah. and then I broadcast through StreamYard. But when you're in StreamYard, if you connect all your social media platforms together, then it goes out. So I don't yeah. have my affiliate link for StreamYard. I know that's a platform you're using too, but I found that it's just a great platform oh, for, as an expert to be able to, to, to get the content out into the marketplace.